Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. And the Lord replied, if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say this to a mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your slave who has just come in from plowing or tending the sheep in the field, come here at once and take your place at the table? Would you not rather say to him, prepare supper for me, put on your apron and serve me while I eat and drink? Later you may eat and drink. Do you thank the slave for doing what was commanded? Also you, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, we are worthless slaves, we have done only what we ought to have done. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated, and if the children can come forward, please. <clears throat> Woo! Hello. So we're going to look at some seeds this morning. Have you ever looked at seeds before? So here is, let's see. That's all right. Come on up. I get that look often. (laughs) Yeah, you think it's funny now. Now that's a good big sister. <clears throat> so do you know what this seed is? Mm-hmm. What? Seed. Does it look like a pumpkin seed? Mm-hmm. Have you ever seen a seed like this before? It's a zucchini seed. Mmm. Do you like zucchini? No, don't eat it. Oh, please, God, don't eat it. Don't eat it. Don't eat it. Okay, sorry. <laughs> It's a zucchini seed. Have you ever seen a zucchini plant before? Do you know how tall they grow? This high and that wide. This little seed can make it grow that big. This little seed. I got another seed to show you. Let's see. This is, don't look. Do you know what kind of seed this is? Do you know what kind of seed that is? You're right. What kind of bean? Green bean. Do you like green beans? Me too. How tall do green bean plants grow? About that tall, right? This little seed can make it... I have one more seed I'm going to show you. Can you see it? Do you know what kind of seed this is? Look at how tiny it is. See, it's a little tiny, tiny seed. That's a mustard seed. And a mustard seed, can you see that big tree? That big tree came from a seed that tiny. That's pretty tiny, right? And a huge tree. <clears throat> so no matter how small the seed, when it's planted, it can grow into something bigger. And plants are always bigger than their seeds, especially that giant mustard tree. So God says, put your trust in me. Even though you have a little faith the size of a tiny seed, it can grow into something big. So when you have a faith that grows, guess what you can do? 
You can do what your mom and dad says. You can be nice to people and kind to people. You can give your coats to the winter wear giveaway. You can do big and great things. Even though your faith is as tiny, look at that little tiny seed. Have you ever seen a seed that small? It can grow into something big. So why don't you join me in a circle and we'll have our prayer. If you're able, please stand too. Laurel, I'll, I'll make sure the seeds go away, that they won't get stuck in the piano. Do you want to come and stand in a circle and we're going to pray? Come on up here. Come on. You ready? Can you fold your hands like this? Come on, stand right here. So let's can you fold your hands like this. So repeat after me. Good morning, God. Thank you for today. Thank you for our faith. Help me do kind things. Help me do wonderful things. We pray this in Jesus' name. You ready? Put your hands in the middle. Amen. Do you want to help me preach? And they run away. <clears throat> so grace to you and peace from God our Creator and from our Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. So on the church calendar, today is designated the commemoration of the holy mustard seed. Did you know that? Did you know that was on the calendar? It's not. I made it up. <clears throat> but I think it really should be on the calendar. And I think there should be four gospel readings instead of one for our commemoration of the Holy Seed Day. So our first gospel reading would be the one I read earlier where a mulberry tree can be uprooted because of the mustard seed. Our second reading would be from Matthew 17. Then, Jesus, then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, why could we not cast the demon out? And he said to them, because of your little faith, for I truly tell you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to here, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. Our third reading comes from Mark chapter 9. Jesus also said, with what can, can we compare the kingdom of God? For what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. When it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches, branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in the shade. And finally, we have from Luke again, Jesus said, therefore, what is the kingdom of God like? To what should I compare? It is like a mustard seed. That someone took and sowed in the ground, it grew and became a tree, and birds of the air made nests in its branches. And of course, all preachers and ministers and pastors and priests would be encouraged to wear a liturgically correct mustard t-shirt. There's also a, a children's story that can go along with today, and it's a story about a jolly little train. Do you know why this train was so jolly? Because she was carrying toys and goodies to all the good boys and girls. And she's chugging along, you know, chug, 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 puff, 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 happy as can be. And just as they were about to go up to the mountain, guess what happens? The engine poops out, 
And she tries and tries, but those wheels won't budge. And she's wondering, what is she going to do? And suddenly, this shiny new engine comes by. Will you help us get over the mountain, she says. Sorry, I do not pull toys and goodies. That's not my job. I am a passenger train. And then a big engine is the next one to come by. Will you help me get over the mountain? I'm a freight engine. I don't move toys. I move important machinery. And then an old train comes by. Will you help me over the mountain? And the old train says, I'm old. I'm tired. I'm done. No more work for me. And then this cute little blue engine comes by. Will you help me over the mountain? Me? No, I, I, I'm too small for you. I've, I've never done that before. And in fact, I've never even gone over that mountain. I don't think I can do it. Please, please help us. And all the toys look outside of the train, all looking sad, hoping that this blue little engine will help. I don't think I can. Yes, I think you can. Do you know the rest of the story? I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. That little engine there, with the tiny spark of confidence and faith, the size of a holy mustard seed, was able to pull the train over the mountain. That little engine could do wondrous and unexpected and, and, and un extraordinary things. So what makes a mustard seed holy? Well, I think it's important to understand what I mean by holy or what I don't mean by holy. If something is holy, it does not, does not have magical or supernatural powers. It does not glow in the dark. It doesn't zap you when you touch it. Being holy means that something is being set aside for a special purpose or use. Memorial Stadium in Lincoln is holy, right? I mean, come on, we're in Nebraska. <laughs> Admit it. It's holy, right? It's reserved for what? <laughs> Duh, football, okay? I can't believe like you're like shy, Huskers saying. Morning cup of coffee. This is holy. This is set aside so Pastor Terry can be somewhat civil in the morning. A ritual can also be holy, right? That morning, how many of you have morning cups of coffee and it's the most beautiful thing you've ever had in your life? Mm. God said the Sabbath day, the seventh day of the week, is a holy day, a day set aside for rest so you can focus on God. The mustard seed is holy. That mustard seed is holy. It's set aside for a special purpose, to make pickles, summer sausage. But I see its holiness as more of a metaphorical holiness. Faith is like a mustard seed. If mustard seeds are holy, then faith is holy. And faith is what you set aside so that you can do God's work. And what is God's work? Feed the hungry, clothe the naked, visit the sick and those in prison, forgive others, worship God. Sounds pretty easy. But is it easy? Visiting the sick is not as easy as it may sound. Visiting the sick takes faith. It's not meeting a friend for coffee at the hive. It's meeting someone on their worst day. It's meeting someone while they languish alone in a hospital bed. It's making rounds in an intensive care unit. In my first week as a hospital chaplain intern, I was called to give last rites to a person whose life support was about to be removed. 
And my faith and confidence were smaller than the smallest mustard seed. I was not the little engine that could. And in fact, as on my way up to the room, I kept saying, I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do this. I didn't even want to be a hospital chaplain intern in the first place. I felt forced into that internship because it was required for ordination. They said it would be good for me. Don't you hate it when people say it's good for you? <laughs> it's even worse when they're right. My faith and trust in the candidacy process for ordination was smaller than the smallest mustard seed. It seemed like I had no holiness in me. In other words, I felt like I didn't have anything set aside in me to be a hospital chaplain. Where was my holy faith and trust to face the hard aspects of chaplaincy? Where was my holy faith and trust in the ordination process? And it turns out that that little minuscule size of faith really changed the minute I walked in that room. My fear melted. God grew that minuscule seed into a giant tree of trust. Trust that the Holy Spirit would give me the words of comfort for George, for, for his health care providers, and also for me. God grew that seed into believing God's work found in the harsh beauty of hospital chaplaincy. I could do what God called me to do, holy work, work set aside for people in need. So whenever I was called to the surgical ICU, the emergency department, or just a room, I would say to myself, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I know I can, I know I can. Now, some of you may be thinking, why hasn't this happened to me? Where's my giant mustard tree? Why am I still saying, I don't think I can? Why is my faith less than? Well, you know, I ask myself those questions. I still ask those questions. I still compare myself and my faith to others, especially to other pastors. I feel like their faith always seems to be better than mine. And I have to remind myself, and you too, that Jesus doesn't want us to compare our faith and ourselves to each other. Instead, we are to focus on what God wants us to do. And oftentimes, it's the most simplest, mundane, ordinary act of faith. Something like, a hello and how are you? Especially between people that are estranged, estranged parents and children. Or, I'm so sorry, between arguing friends. Or, let me help to a person in need. Or just being present and near someone, sitting with them in silence. God calls us to do great things here in Bloomfield, to welcome, to clothe, to feed, to visit, to forgive, to worship. Some days, we feel like we can do it. Other days, not so much. And there will be some days when we don't believe that we can do it at all. But know that with the power of your creator, with the love of Christ, with the confidence of the Holy Spirit, your mustard seed, my mustard seed, can uproot mulberry trees and throw them in the sea, move mountains, and just give life. Amen.